Okay, so we are uh, recording this, and again, I'll put this video when we get online. Um, we are going to fill in the unit circle. Now, when we're talking about the unit circle for trigonometry, a uh, unit circle means a circle whose radius is one, so one unit. So that means uh, the idea is for us to fill in most of this information here. First thing I'm gonna put is that this is the point one zero, okay? Because this is like an, an X, Y axis right here, okay? An X, Y axis. And we have a radius of one, so that's the point one zero. I can't find the circle. Where do you get it? Yeah, same. Oh, it's you guys didn't find it on yeah, School of GR. Right, give me just a second. All right, so we're gonna just take, because it's a unit circle, uh, the coordinates here would be at zero, one. That would be straight up. Straight to the left is going to be negative one, zero. And straight down would be at zero, negative one. All right. So, well, now we're going to get into uh, some more specifics. And we're really going to focus on this quadrant right here. Now, you may remember the quadrants. This is the first quadrant here and they actually go counterclockwise. So the second quadrant is the top left. And they're usually written in Roman numerals. So the top left is the second quadrant, the bottom left is the third quadrant, and the bottom right is the fourth quadrant. And for right now, we are gonna focus on that first quadrant. And I wanna fill out the degrees of the angles. So this first angle, and the angle always comes from this x-axis and goes counterclockwise. So our first angle is at 30 degrees. Okay, so that is a 30 degree angle in the first quadrant. The second angle is a 45 degree angle. And the third angle is a 60 degree angle. And I started with those because I'm gonna refer back to them quite a bit. In fact, they're called reference angles uh, because we can, if we get this part down here, if we know this first quadrant well, we can then figure out a lot of information in the other three quadrants. So I really wanna hammer home this first quadrant. And a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you may remember from your geometry days. I'm gonna draw a triangle and I'm gonna erase this in a minute. So if you wanna draw it and erase it, it's fine. I wouldn't leave it on there though because your picture is gonna get pretty jumbled. But I'm gonna drop down a perpendicular right there and draw in a triangle where that's 30 degrees. And if that's 90 degrees, that would make that 60 degrees. And so that is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right, now, if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know and just unmute yourself and uh, shout them out. But if you recall a 30, 60, 90, the relation between the sides is the side across from the 30 is, is a number X, and the hypotenuse is twice as big as that. And then the longer side is x root 3. So we have x, 2x, and x root 3. Well, remember that we know that the hypotenuse here is 1. So if the hypotenuse is 1, because that's the radius of the circle, that means that this side has to be half of that, or 1 half. And the bottom has to be one half times the square root of three, which we usually just combine that and write it as root three over two. So given that information, I know that my X value, I'm trying to find my X value here, that coordinate, my X value is root three over two and my y value is one half, those 
are the coordinates of that point at 30 degrees. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna erase that uh, green triangle here. I just wanted to show you where those coordinates came from. It comes from a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now sticking with the 30, 60, 90 triangle, uh, I'm gonna skip that 45 degree and I'm gonna make the six, I'm gonna do a 60 degree angle uh, because we just talked about the 30, 60, 90. So if I were to draw in a triangle with that guy, now this is 60 degrees down here, meaning our 30 degrees is up there. Our hypotenuse is still one. So the short leg is one half and the tall leg is root three over two. So that means the coordinates at 60 degrees our x value is one half and our y value is root three over two. All right, well, I, I skipped over the 45 degree angle uh, and I did that because I'm, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna draw in a triangle here now, if that's 45 degrees and that's 90 degrees, that becomes a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, you might remember that our shortcut was X and X and X root two. And so if our hypotenuse is equal to one in this case, then both legs come out to be root two over two. Meaning the coordinates at 45 degrees are root two over two for both the X and Y values. So really we're gonna use these values so often you're probably gonna have them just memorized naturally um, and I just wanted to show you that they come from the, sh uh, the shortcuts, the special right triangles. Uh, do you have any questions yet? All right. Um, well, you know, how does this fit into what we talked about um, yesterday or in our last class period? Well, when you're looking at the unit circle, the cosine is the x value and the sine is the y value. Okay, so I kind of wrote that as a, a, as a coordinate. Meaning if I wanted to find the cosine of 30 degrees, if I wanted to, I'm gonna erase this part here, but if I, and I'm just drawing an example problem, if I wanted to find the cosine of 30 degrees, well, the cosine means X value, 30 degrees is where I look. So the X value at 30 degrees is root three over two. So that means the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of three over two. Again, cosine is the X value and sine is the Y value. So the sine of 30 degrees would be one half, it would be the Y value. All right, so that's where we're headed. And I'm gonna do a lot of that tying those together uh, in just a moment. But the reason I started off with just this first quadrant is because we can refer to these reference angles to find all the information we need in the other quadrants. So for example, if I know that this angle is 30 degrees and I wanted to find this angle, well, I know that this is 180 degrees because it's half a circle. So if I went 180 degrees and I know that this chunk here, which is the same as this chunk here, is 30. And so 180 minus 30 is 150. So that means that this is a 150 degree angle. Again, because it's 30 degrees short of 180.
this angle here is going to be 45 degrees short of 180 because those two angles are the same. So 180 minus 45 is 135 degrees. And then that third angle is going to be 120 degrees because it's 60 degrees short of 180. Okay, so I found just by knowing my reference angles and doing a reflection over the y-axis, I can find all those angles in the second quadrant. All right, I'm going to write 180 degrees here. Straight to the left is 180 degrees. But I also, using doing a little reflection, can find the angles in the third quadrant. Well, if I wanted to find this angle here, I know that's 180. And then I'm going to do another 30 degree chunk. So 180 plus 30 is 210 degrees. So that angle is 210 degrees. The next angle is 180 plus a 45 degree chunk, which is 225 degrees. Then we have 180 plus a 60 degree chunk or 240 degrees. So again, I'm just piecing together my parts from the other quadrants. All right, straight down will be 270 degrees or three quarters of a full circle, right? Three quarters of 360 would be 270. And so if this was zero degrees, going all the way around in a circle is 360 degrees. So I'll fill those out. Um, because that 360, at least in, in my mind, is helpful because to find this angle, I know, I know this is 360 and it's 30 degrees short of 360 or 330 degrees. Okay, 360 minus 30. Or for the next one, 360 minus 45 degrees is 315 degrees. or 300 minus 60 is 300 degrees. All right, any questions on how we found those? All right, so if we can find those angles, we also can use these reference angles and the coordinates of the reference angles to find the coordinates in the other quadrants. For example, if I wanted to find these coordinates, I know it's these guys just reflected into the second quadrant. Well, what happens in the second quadrant? The X becomes negative and the Y becomes positive. Because remember, we're just looking at like an X, Y grid. So I'm gonna use these coordinates over here, but my X value will be negative and my Y value will be positive. So that's going to be negative root 3 over 2 and positive 1 half. Okay, x is negative and y is positive. Same with this next set. It's going to be these guys where my x is negative and my y is positive. So I have negative root 2 over 2 and my y is positive root 2 over 2. And my third side, or I'm sorry, coordinate, I have positive, negative one half, my mistake, and root three over two. All right, well, let's keep rolling with this. We can go down to the third quadrant. Now in the third quadrant, 
you know, remember if we're at a regular X, Y graph, you know, our X's are negative and our Y's are negative. So I'm using those same coordinates, but both X and Y's are negative. So like this guy reflected here and then down, I'm just gonna have my X's and Y's be negative. So that's gonna be negative root three over two. and negative one half. Okay, so that 200 degrees, I'm sorry, 210 degrees, I just referred to the 30 degree angle and I made both the X and Y values negative because it's in the third quadrant. So for the 225 degrees, I'm gonna to refer to the 45 degree angle, both X and Y's are negative, so that's gonna be negative root two over two and negative root two over two. And our next set will be negative one half and root three over two. Uh, because for 240, I referred to that set of coordinates. And in the fourth quadrant, X is positive, Y is negative. So here we go. I'm taking this guy, just putting it down here. My X is positive, my Y is negative. So that's gonna be root three over two, negative one half. For 315 degrees, it's gonna be those. X is positive, Y is negative. So that's gonna be root two over two, negative root two over two. And then we'll have positive one half, negative root three over two. So lots of reflections here. And if we can get that first quadrant down pat and really get to know that using doing a little mental math, we should be able to find the rest of them. Now, before I tie in much more of the, how the sine and the cosine and all the other trig functions add into that, does anybody have any questions? Okay, well, we're gonna find the six trig functions. In fact, we'll start with just the sine or cosine or tangent. And we're gonna find those of a certain angle. Remember the cosine is the X and the sine is the Y and I'll explain tangent in a minute. So for example, if I wanted to find the sine of 120 degrees, and then I'm also gonna find the cosine of 225 degrees. So let's do the sine of 120 first. Well, I remember up top, sine means Y value. So I wanna find the Y value at an angle of 120 degrees. So I go up to 120 degrees. The Y value is root three over two. So the sine of 120 is root three over two. All right, the cosine. The cosine, remember, is the X value. So that means I'm gonna find the X value at 225 degrees. So I look up here at 225 degrees, my X value is negative root two over two. So the cosine of 225 is negative root two over two. Now the tangent sometimes uh, takes a little bit of simplifying to do. So if I wanted to find the tangent of 240 degrees, okay? 
Well, the tangent is the sine over the cosine. And the sine is the y, and the cosine is the x. So that means I'm going to go to 240 degrees, and I'm going to do the y value divided by the x value. Okay? 240 degrees, we're looking right here. The y value is root 3 over 2. And the x value is negative 1 half. I got those values right here. Okay, the y over the x. The y is root 3 over 2, and the x value is negative 1 half. But I got to do a little math simplification here. Uh, here's a little shortcut for you. If you're dividing by 2 on top and dividing by 2 on the bottom, you can cancel those 2s. But you can see if you just flipped over the denominator and made a multiplication, which is probably what you didn't maybe in your algebra class, the twos cancel out. And so that leaves us with negative square root of three. So the tangent of 240 degrees is negative root three. Anybody have any questions?